Hi, I'm Andrew, and this is Blaster Breakdown. Today, the Neutrino. This is a remote line, semi-automatic HPA blaster powered by Spectre's Supercore. It's designed by Pete in the UK, and I'll link to his Etsy store in the description below. The files are £12.50 in the UK, that's about 14 euros, 22 or 23 Australian dollars. I've no idea what that is in American money. If you can figure it out, drop a comment below and let me know. I've built a number of Supercore blasters and seen many others, do I think this is the simplest design to build and put together? I don't think, I know. And today I'll show you why. Before we start though, if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and don't forget to like if you enjoy my content. All right, let's have a look inside. Okay, to show you just how compact you could transport the Neutrino, this uh, is a case I got from something else. It's about 35 centimeters by about uh, 25, I think. And I can fit everything I need other than my remote line and bottle uh, entirely inside here. So handguard, we'll look at that later. Stock, we'll look at that later. Barrel and scar, we'll look at that later. But this is the body of the Neutrino itself. Okay, so when you purchase the files from Pete's Etsy shop, which is something you should definitely do, get the file for the main body of the blaster and the license is unlimited prints for personal use. You can print one for a friend for the cost of filament, so you're not allowed to sell it for profit, of course, unless you have a separate licensing arrangement with Pete. The other components like the stock, the muzzle, the uh, trigger, mag release, and the grip plates are found on Thingiverse and they're free to use and free to modify. I'll put a link to both the Etsy and the Thingiverse pages in the description below. Now, being able to modify those additional parts means that you can do things like if you wanted to add some texturing to these grips or a logo or some kind of design, you can go ahead and do that. If you want to modify the trigger in some way, you can do that. In fact, my friend Dan has done that by thickening and then adding a little cutout for the button of the MJV03 valve. If you want to change the design of the handguard, make it shorter or longer or just change the entire look, you can go and do that. If you want to use a different uh, type of stock other than the M4 buffer tube style, you can do that. So it's a really interesting way of releasing these files. I think it encourages creativity and I'm certainly looking forward to seeing what sort of designs other people might come up with. Okay, let's crack this open. Now, as you can see, this is really the most simple design you can imagine. If you've never put together a Supercore blaster, it doesn't get any simpler than this. The Supercore sits where it needs to, the MJV03 valve sits where it needs to, the remote line connection sits where it needs to. You've got an elbow piece here screwed into the back of the Supercore. You've got two straight pieces here into the MJV03 valve. The only thing you need to do is cut this hose to the right length to fit. There's really nothing else that you need to do. When you lift this assembly out, you'll see everything is just perfectly the right size to fit your pneumatic components. You literally can't go wrong putting this one together. The trigger, of course, presses against the MJV03 valve. You'll need a spring. This is a catch from uh, something or other. And the mag retention piece has a little indent there so that the spring sits in. There's no mag release as such. Holds the talon detent right there. And then you just pull it out. And that's how the talon mags are retained. Other than that, the only thing holding the bastard together are these magnets. Now version one of this design had two of these holes, they're 15 millimeter diameter and I think five millimeters deep, four or five millimeters deep. So version one had two places for these magnets, version two has five. Depending on the strength of magnets used, you might need more or fewer of these in place. I'm making do with just two pairs. When I first had a crack at the version one design, I got the strongest magnets I could find. They were N42 rating and they're actually so strong that they would sometimes tear away from where I'd epoxied them into the holes. Or if I wasn't careful, they'd smash against each other and, act and end up cracking. So I actually lost a few magnets just through the force of the magnets hitting each other and cracking. So what I've done uh, this time, I've actually gone with thinner magnets. So these are three millimeters deep and the supplier I get these from, the magnets come in a, well, obviously stuck together with magnetism, but they're separated with a little plastic spacer. And so what I've done is actually glue the spacer to the magnet to fill out that extra space because the depth of the magnet at three millimeters doesn't quite fill these holes. What that does is, number one, it protects the surface of the magnets from smashing against each other. Number two, it reduces the strength with which the magnets 
hold each other together. The strength of magnetism, of course, varies with the square of the distance. So adding a couple of millimetres between the magnets so they're not quite touching means the effective strength holding the bastard together is a little lower. Now, if you're using much weaker magnets, that may not be necessary. You might need to use all five locations to glue the magnets in. So it's a bit of a trial and error depending on the strength of magnets you have access to and how well you need the blaster to be held together. But for me, two pairs of magnets top and bottom is plenty enough. A few other features to point out. This little piece here sits at the top of the magazine and the first dart will rest against that to help align it with the receiver. The space for the receiver itself is tighter than version one, but I still found I needed a couple of wraps of electrical tape to have it sit nice and snug. Of course, that's to be expected. You'll get minor differences in the final dimensions of your blaster, depending on your print settings and your filament and so on. That's an easy thing to do. So then putting the blaster together really is a matter of, I'll screw on my barrel now. This is a Spectre hybrid 1730 seconds brass inside 16 mil aluminium threaded at both ends. And how long is it? Must be 35 centimeters long. And so that just sits there. The pneumatics go in like so. And again, you literally can't get it wrong. The mag piece and my trigger. And again, yeah, that's all there is to it. So here's the other side of my shell. These side plates, they're just glued in place. There's nothing tricky there. And then that's it. That's together. So that's not going to come apart accidentally. The magnets are holding that nice and tightly. Then the second method of holding the shell together is these worker. So this is Nerf rail to Picatinny pieces. I've painted some white to go with the, with the rest of the blaster. And these just slide on and again, hold the shell together top and bottom. So you sort of need one piece for here and then for your muzzle pieces or the handguard it comes in two halves. The bottom has a piece of Picatinny to start off with there. Uh, and what that does is allows your 27.9 centimeter adapter piece. And so that will attach the front of the bottom of the main part of the blaster and then carry over to the bottom of this front piece. You can see I've attached this ergonomic foregrip. This is uh, my favorite design, sits really nicely. And on the left side of the front muzzle piece, I've also screwed on another short piece of Picatinny at the front here. I mean, you could attach a, a full length one if you like. That's just a screw going directly into the filament. And uh, this piece is where your thumb can rest. So it's a, a pretty comfortable setup. So then the front goes together like that and I can slide this on like so all the way. And then that's the right length to fit over here. So that slides on just like that. And then finally another 27.9 piece to go across the top. Uh, and that's that. So this is how the foregrip sits. It's pretty nice. I mean, I could stick a, a second one on that side and have it full ambi bro, but uh, I'll just go with right-handed uh, use. Now the stock piece, it just slots in here and you can see these six millimeter holes that line up with this hole through the middle. And so you need a 45 millimeter length, six millimeter diameter pin. Oh, you might see that uh, I've just put a a few layers of electrical tape there. I did find that this was a fraction loose uh, and there was a tiny bit of wobble, again, due to minor differences in filament and um, the way the, the pieces are printed, but uh, that's an easy adjustment to make again. And so now that pin holds that really nice and sturdy. Here's a, a Python stock that I've again painted up to look nice. slides on like so. And then I've got a round Trivictus printed scar that again completes the look. So that just spots on and friction fits there. And that's it. That's how simple the neutrino is to put together.
You saw how compact it was in the little case I have for transport. You could see how easy it was to put together. It's equally easy to take apart, pop the scar off, slide the front barrel off, one rail, the pin, and then the two halves will come apart. But otherwise, uh, let's take this outside now and get some chronograph readings. Okay, let's get some numbers from the Neutrino. First of all, I'm going to start at 50 PSI, then we'll go up to 75 and then 100 PSI, just to see what sort of numbers we get. So I'll start with six worker gen threes at each pressure, and then I've got these worker bamboos that my buddy Dan got in and gave me a box of. So yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see how they come up. Haven't used them before, but uh, yeah, we'll see how they go. So six of each dart type, 50 PSI to start. That was the Gen 3s. And that was the Bamboos. Okay, now we're at 75 PSI. Bit of variation there. There was one, uh, one of the Gen 3s was obviously a misfire. Now we're up to 100 PSI. Again, six of each dart type. We'll see how this goes. Okay, that was pretty interesting. Uh, I think I might drop it down to maybe 75 PSI to do our accuracy tests now. Okay, here we are 50 feet from the target. I'm at 75 PSI. Again, I've got six Gen 3s and then six worker bamboos. Uh, no sight, just eyeballing it. Let's see how we go. One high, one low. The rest were right on target. Bamboos now. So maybe the bamboos were a little less accurate. Really small sample size. Both dart types flew quite straight. Haven't seen any objective testing of the Trivictus scars against other offerings, but I'll be keen to use this in some games to see how the accuracy goes out in the field. So there you have it. That's the Neutrino, the simplest super core blaster around. Don't forget to check out the links in the description for the files. Please leave any questions or comments below, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.